Good afternoon. Um, my name is Jamie Skeller, and I'm the co-founder of a blockchain-based voting technology startup called Horizon State. Um, traveled all the way from Australia, uh, not just for this, but doing a bit of a tour of our technology and our mission uh, across Asia, in South Korea, uh, in Europe, in the Ukraine, uh, and now here on the west coast of the US, having just come from New York to talk to the United Nations and their uh, sustainability goals uh, about this, which is redesigning um, democracy on the blockchain. So about a year and a half ago, I got working with a, an Australian not-for-profit democratic movement named MyVote, and throughout that process, we were thinking about ways to achieve some of their goals, which um, ultimately was about pulling a constituency with immediacy and regularity, um, which meant through a mobile device or a personal computer, <clears throat> but finding a way to do that in a secure manner. Really what we were asking ourselves was, um, if the founders of our nations and indeed our enterprises, uh, our capitalist institutions, uh, were designing the democratic processes and tools today, what would that look like? Um, if they could leverage blockchain, and they could leverage the internet, and they could leverage smartphones, uh, how would they do things differently? I think it's pretty safe to say they would not be asking everybody in a constituency to gather at a centralized location, such as a polling booth, do so once every four years, write on a piece of paper, throw that into a box, um, and then just sort of pray that their representatives are really representing them. Um, I think they would probably see that there's better ways to do it. Uh, there are better ways to engage their constituency and do it with immediacy and security. We live in a world where driverless cars are on the verge of reality, uh, and in fact they are, but of course they're going to get more and more sophisticated uh, in the very near term. <clears throat> Yet the way that we govern our societies the way that we govern our institutions, uh, including corporate ones, uh, remains a century or two old relic. Um, it's significantly outdated, uh, and there is really no excuse anymore to be um, you know, orchestrating ourselves um, and pursuing the kinds of demo democratic processes and tools in the ways uh, that we currently do. <clears throat> to give you some real-world examples of the inefficiencies uh, and the problems that face uh, our current processes and tools, in Australia right now, we have a national postal vote underway. The government is posting out votes in envelopes to every eligible voter in the entire country. They're doing so at significant cost uh, to the Australian taxpayers in the vicinity of $122 million. And it costs so much because the orchestration of such an archaic democratic process um, is really long and it's really slow, requires a lot of people, um, and it's also actually really insecure. We've seen hundreds and thousands of postal votes left out in the rain, uh, votes that will now not be counted. Um, and if we were to utilize the blockchain to run a similar sort of process, um, utilizing modern, digital, secure frameworks, then we'd be able to strip at least one and a two off that number. We would be talking about something in the vicinity of two million as opposed to 122 million. I'll talk a little bit more about some of the tech and security in a moment, but the cost saving is obviously significant. Here in America, um, Voting isn't compulsory, and we see about half of the nation who doesn't bother to vote. Now, there are lots of reasons for voter apathy, including feeling that your vote simply doesn't matter, or feeling that you are not well informed enough to make a decision. Um, but a reality is that the further away from a polling position that any individual is, statistically increases the likelihood that they won't bother to vote. So there's also uh, a tremendous uh, inconvenience in this process, especially if you feel that your vote isn't going to make a difference anyway. Um, again, with smartphones in our pockets and the internet and blockchain as an underlying technology, uh, we can help mitigate this reality and improve uh, the, out the turnout and hopefully improve outcomes as well. And then, of course, there are our attempts right now for digital base voting. So we have e-voting machines still in centralized locations, and we obviously have um, online voting opportunities as well, but right now, cast to centralized, insecure servers. So um, we might be utilizing the internet for a vote right now, be it within an organization, it could be an AGM, it could be a startup pitch night, uh, or indeed something governmental, an electoral uh, you know, process, or indeed some kind of poll like the one that's being undertaken in Australia right now for same-sex marriage. Um, but when it is cast to this centralized server, 
we still have a, a central point of failure, uh, a, a single point that um, attack vectors can be applied to and that the result can be compromised. Um, to recap, where we are right now is that the process of soliciting votes in traditional methods and processes is really expensive. To set up these polling booths and ask people to come and uh, you know, drop pieces of paper in a, in a basket or a bucket every uh, few years um, costs per voter uh, approximately $7 uh, and as high as 25 Those geographically centralized methods um, of participation are also slow to orchestrate, which increases price, um, and they increase voter apathy, because to be honest, a lot of people don't really want to have to go there and do that. Um, and then, last but not least, is the topic I was just discussing, which is the insecurity of current electronic uh, voting systems, be that centralized or indeed over the internet. So the solutions that now exist and the solutions that we've been working on as Horizon State um, include, and the first one is, is profound, an unhackable ballot box, a record of the vote um, that cannot be changed, and I'll talk a little bit about blockchain and Bitcoin and how this is possible in just a moment for those of you that aren't particularly well versed yet. But for the first time in history, we have the opportunity to create a record of a vote that cannot be tampered with. There is no way to change it or reverse it or alter it. It is set in stone, uh, and this obviously provides a huge amount of confidence to the constituency and really changes um, how we orchestrate ourselves and the level of trust that is applied uh, to everyday interactions. It's a society changing technology for many reasons, but voting in particular, uh, from my perspective, is one of the most uh, important. Convenient voting via smartphone, it's a bit of a no-brainer really, and technically we can already do it, but without that blockchain piece, um, it's insecure. There isn't necessarily any trust in the result, and there's a lot of uh, warranted concern about um, doing so based on that uh, security reality. And then lastly, by utilizing these pieces of technology, the smartphone's in our pocket, or a shared library computer, and the blockchain is this technology which creates an unhackable ballot box. We're able to significantly reduce costs to the taxpayers, that's you and me, uh, wherever you are in the world. Uh, so instead of spending $122 million on that postal vote, we are only spending a couple, a couple million, if that. <clears throat> so for those of you not particularly familiar with blockchain and how it works, um, I published an article online not so long ago called A Blockchain Explanation Your Parents Could Understand. And uh, apologies for the ageist sort of uh, statement, but uh, I came up with the title and indeed the article when I was thinking about explaining blockchain to my parents, uh, and they got it. So I think, uh, I, I think testament to the title, it was accurate enough. But if we are to talk about, again, using the reference of a centralized digital ballot box, being casting a vote to one location uh, on the internet, so to speak, a centralized uh, database, even if that's on a cloud network, you're really just replicating that one point of failure, uh, and only one point of failure needs to be compromised uh, to change that result or to otherwise pursue some kind of malicious activity. Bitcoin uh, is built atop of probably the first uh, mainstream blockchain, and it provides the opportunity to avoid that pitfall entirely. So in the case of financial transactions using Bitcoin, um, instead of sending your transaction your request for a financial transaction to an intermediary, um, a, a centralized point of trust. Instead, it goes out to the crowd, um, and hundreds of machines, hundreds of nodes, will effectively look at that transaction, they'll ensure that it's valid, and they'll add it to a distributed ledger, uh, effectively simultaneously. They've reached consensus, they agree that this is the reality, and that is the reality that now all of them are wedded to. Changing the result thereafter is, at the moment, based on computational power, impossible. Uh, now, that may change with quantum computing, but for the moment, the idea that you would be able to set up enough computational power to corrupt the network uh, by effectively trying to modify all of those records of the transaction all at once, all around the world, is, is, is uh, a, a far, far-fetched idea. So, talking about um, a, a real-world example which might be a little bit more relatable, talking about it in real terms, if we have Joe and we have Sue, and Joe wants to give Sue a couple of dollars. Now, they don't want to involve a bank, and so instead, 200 of their most trust, trusted associates stand around, their friends, colleagues, family members. They've all got record books, and they witness this transaction of $2 uh, from Joe to Sue, and they all record it at the same time. They've reached consensus, they've seen it, they've seen where it's come from, where it's going, they've seen the value and other characteristics of the transaction, and they've reached agreement. This is, this is reality, this is the case. 
Um, now, if one of these people wanted to try and say that, in fact, it was $200 and not $2, well, the rest of the network would disagree. It simply wouldn't be allowed, it would be rejected. And so that's really what we're talking about uh, in terms of utilizing the blockchain for a post-unforgeable integrity system. Um, and really, kind of what we're doing is replacing those Bitcoin transactions, those financial transactions, with votes, and we get all the same benefits. We've been doing this since February, in, uh, well, February of this year. Um, my vote has run four nationally inclusive votes using our blockchain-based voting technology um, and done so successfully. Um, and we are now looking at commercializing this on a global scale. This is a bit of an unfair comparison, but sometimes unfair comparisons are the most important ones. We have a traditional ballot box, centralized, still not that secure, uh, provides a, a, a great inconvenience to people needing to utilize it. Um, and it's hundreds and hundreds of years old. This is the way we've done things for forever, more or less, uh, as far as, as long as democracy has existed. We have a current online ballot box, SQL, centralized database, exploitable. Um, now, it has some convenience gains, but is arguably even less secure than that paper ballot box. Now, finally, thanks to blockchain technology and the systems that I've sort of just described in layman's terms, we are able to create a distributed, secure digital ballot box which means that the result is tamper-proof. It cannot be changed. There is no question of the result. There is trust thanks to technology. Now, I've talked a lot about governmental purposes, um, elections and so forth, um, but this technology is applicable to anywhere that a secure vote is important. Uh, so we're working with global NGOs and multinational institutions. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm very proud to say that we have just signed our partnership paperwork with SAP. Um, and we'll be venturing forth into the world of multinationals, looking at existing processes for annual general meetings and board votes, um, and indeed polling national and international constituencies about matters of conservation, matters of spend. Um, wherever the re re result needs to be trusted and needs to be secure, uh, we now have a technology to achieve that and deliver trust to everybody involved. Um, in closing, I think um, it's probably pretty obvious, and I hope that all of you find it just as profound as I do, but we are, thanks to this technology, on the verge of something very, very special in regards to the way that society organizes itself. Blockchain is providing enormous opportunity in many industries uh, for many applications. Obviously, the big one for me is indeed voting and democratic processes, um, and I think that um, historic change is now on the horizon, and we have the opportunity to seriously and legitimately eradicate corruption from our election processes on a global scale. Thank you.